Hey everyone, how are you? I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. I am gonna be continuing the journey of small businesses and talking about legal and some business tips today. So before we start though, I have to give my regular disclaimer that the information that I'm sharing is for educational purposes and informational purposes only. It is not legal advice and this information or video does not constitute a legal attorney-client privilege or a relationship. Okay, with that being said, let's move forward. So today I wanted to talk about shifting your brick and mortar to a virtual space. And whether you have the brick and mortar and the virtual space online or just an online or you're starting a new online business, I just wanted to talk about some key aspects to think about and to keep in your back pockets so that you know, when you do start the process and the journey, or if you've already started it, have those tips. And so that way you can be aware of them. And so the first thing I really want to talk about is that you have made a decision and now we're good. We're going to move forward on the decision. And once we're moving forward on the decision, remember small steps have an impact also, and they're no, there's nothing too small and nothing too big. And so keep moving forward. So from making that decision, you are now going to be thinking about what is going to be hosting my website, like which platform. And you really have to choose a platform that suits the business that you're running. Some platforms are better for certain types of businesses and some platforms are better for other types of businesses. So you just need to really do a little research and you know, ask around on Facebook, ask around with your friends and you know, get part of some Facebook groups that have you know, online business Facebook groups or other groups that you're a part of, ask them, which is the platform that you prefer and why? And sometimes you get to get the most brilliant feedback and guidance from your peers. And so that's a great way to start. And then once you have that, you wanna make sure that whatever platform company that you're using, that you've read their terms and condition and you have read their privacy policy and you have also read their security measures that they take for data. How are they protecting the product that you're putting out there and what are their protections and measures in with regards to data breach and security breach? Because it's really important because inadvertently everyone can get in trouble if there is a major data breach. And so you want to make sure that the platform is securing a proper methodology for protecting data. And then once you've picked your platform, you are now maybe selling something online. And if you're selling something online, it's the same thing. You need to pick a payment processing system. And with that, you want to make sure the same thing that you read their terms and conditions, you read their privacy policy, and you also focus on their policies about data breach and security and online security. And you wanna make sure that it's secure. You wanna make sure that they're taking all the precautions they can take because ultimately you look bad if there is a data breach. And so you wanna make sure that everything is as secure as you can have it. So you need to do that research with them as well. And then you also need to see, you know, a lot of them are pretty much on the same level of charging and fees so just kind of pick whichever one works best for you again go out into the internet world go out to the google world go out to facebook world and ask away your questions because sometimes you just get the best advice from your peers another thing that you want to think about is your website itself and when you are making a website you want to keep it simple you want to keep it easy to navigate and you want to make it where there's a call to action also and the call to action is obvious it's clear and there's no confusion i know that when i first made my first website i later had one of my coaches audit my website last year and literally there was like there's no call to action here and i personally felt like there was so many calls to action but clearly I was not right. So I went in, we revamped my website, we you know, did all that stuff, and now I truly understand the difference. And it's so important that there's a clear call to action and it's a simple website, but it's nice to the eyes and it's easy to navigate. And it just makes a world of difference, especially when you have a lot to sell, you wanna make it easy for the person to get exactly what they want. Because if it takes four to five clicks, you're done, they're, they're done, they're gonna leave you. So you wanna make sure that they can do what they need to do within one to three clicks and you're good to go. 
And then that kind of takes me into other parts of the website that you need to focus on. And it's your, just like how you're reading terms and conditions of companies that you're working with, you need to have a terms and conditions for your website. And that is usually, you see that when you get onto other people's website, and sometimes when you're purchasing something from their website, there is a big box, I have read the terms and conditions, and you have to have an affirmative check mark there, which you should definitely be implementing in your business as well. And the terms and conditions is essentially telling your users, the people that are coming onto your website on how to use your website. And what that means is, what they can do on your website and what permissions you've given them on your website. Are they allowed to download pictures and put it on their own Instagram as if it's their own? Probably not. So you're kind of setting the parameters of what they're allowed to do on your website. And that includes the content that's there and you just letting them know that the content is not to be copied and it's protected and it's all rights are reserved. And then also you, if you are selling, on your website, you want to have the refund and exchange policy abundantly clear there as well. So that way there's no confusion on what the return and the refund or the return and exchange policy are. And you also want to include the disclaimers and the disclosures. Disclaimers are saying essentially, I'm not uh, responsible for anything. Like if you know something happens on this website, I'm not going to be responsible for certain things that do happen. And if you are a, say a legal website or a CPA website, you're just giving information and you don't want people to take that and say, oh, this is, you know, accounting advice and I'm going to do this when the reality is it's just very generic advice or generic tips that are being given. And so similarly, you also want to have disclosures that's letting people know that if you have a lot of content on there and you have a lot of affiliate links there or a lot of promotion or sponsored content or if you are working on behalf of another company or representing somebody else then you want to have those disclosures there as well or if you're not also a licensed professional and but you are kind of giving that kind of information you want to give that information you want to have that disclosure too that hey i'm not a cpa but you know I'm giving some accounting advice, but by no means am I a CPA. That way people, it's about the consumer having knowledge and transparency with whatever that they are looking at and observing and purchasing and reading. So you wanna have that transparency with your users, who is the consumer. And then that takes me to your privacy policy, which is required by law. And so you wanna have a good privacy policy on your website. Privacy policy is essentially telling your user how you're using the information that you gather from them when they're on your website. So whether that information is just a name, whether that information is going back to where they're coming from, from their computer, or whether that is a phone number, or whether that is any other information that you might be gathering because they're purchasing or they're opting in for certain downloads or you know whatever they're doing. It's what are you doing with that information? Are you selling that information? Are you sharing that information? Are you just using it for your own analytics? Whatever it is, you need to disclose it so they are aware of how their personal information is being used. And now keep in mind, this required by law and then every state has different rules. It's not all equal. And then with that being said, every country has different rules. And then the EU has a whole other set of rules. So you wanna make sure you're in compliance with essentially the most stringent, because if you are, then you're good to go with everybody else. With that being said, California is probably the most stringent privacy policy laws out there. And um, if you, you know, check it out right now, the new privacy policy has come out of California. So you wanna make sure that you're up to date with that and the GDPR. So that is kind of like your website. And then just some practical, you know, online things that you want to kind of look for is the fact that you have to manage your website. It's not just let me just create it and say bye, see you later. You can't do that. So you want to make sure that the website that you're creating that somebody's managing it, whether it's you or whether it's somebody that you hire for 10 hours a week or if you've hired somebody else, someone needs to manage it and you need to constantly updated and constantly have some activity going on. So your SEOs are better, your Google analytics are better, and there's just so much that goes into all of these algorithms and they're forever changing anyway. So you wanna keep up to date with it or have somebody on your team that can help you keep up to date with it. And you know, so you're on top of it and you're not just kind of having this website that 
is gaining no traction and is essentially just slowly having a death because there's no activity on it and that activity starts with you. So make sure that there's somebody on board ready to do that. And then with that kind of goes with marketing because you want to make sure you're marketing your website, you're marketing your business, you know? And so you want to make sure the SEO is right. If you're putting a blog post out there, make sure you're using the right keywords for that blog post. And this is something I'm still learning. This is something that I am being educated by some of the most brilliant minds because of the different, you know, groups that I'm part of. And there's just such smart, smart people out there. So I know Tuesdays together, you can get together with them and learn some more about these different topics because there are some people out there who are business owners, but they're just really good at this SEO stuff too. And so don't be shy, Pull, shoot it out there. If you need some more information about it, put in your groups and someone will help you. And I know there's so many people out there that are ready to help their peers and their community, especially right now. So, you know, use that advantage, leverage your network, leverage your community also because they're there to help. And so that's a great way to learn SEO, Google uh, paid ads, Facebook ads, which also is the Instagram ads. And then, you know, use your social media, start it. If you don't have it, start your social media. I did that for a friend of mine. She was wanting to start this thing and she kept talking about it over and over again for over a few months. I'm like, let me start it for you. So it was just like this immediate, like we need to get it done. It takes five seconds. Let's do it. So if you haven't started a Instagram account or a Facebook account or some account that you feel most comfortable with that platform, start it now. Don't wait, don't delay, just do it. Well, I hope this was a little encouraging. If you have some more questions, please feel free to reach out. Reach out to me, reach out to your community, reach out to anybody because we're all here and we're all here trying to help each other, hopefully. And I am just really, really looking forward to hearing all the amazing things that you're doing. I'm just so excited to hear all the great things that are coming out of this situation that we're all in right now. And so I wish you well and let me know what's happening.